October 12th, everyone. You are listening to Midwest Horror Network's October 2020 special, where we watch and discuss all of the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes. Today we're doing Treehouse of Horror 12. As always, I'm Brandon, and with me are Mark, Zach, and David, and listening to us is like listening to six leprechauns. So yeah, this is Treehouse of Horror 12. Bit of a basic but i think effective intro for this one uh halloween it's halloween night and smithers is putting up a halloween decoration for mr burns it's just one single orange bat on a string that he is putting on to the top of the weather vane and as smithers gets it hooked up to the weather vane he slips and slides across an electrical cable and gets electrocuted and basically that causes a chain reaction where it's just like there's an explosion coffins with skeletons get thrown all over the place the Simpsons are trick-or-treating at Mr. Burns' house and as fire is raining down from Smithers' charred corpse they run away scared and they run right through Mr. Burns' front fence, kind of slicing them all into different sections that di- then disband and run in all sorts of different directions. And Mr. Burns is very amused by all of this. It's kind of funny. Yeah. I snickered at that part where they went through the fence and they kind of went in different directions. Yeah, that, that's, that, 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 that was, was pretty it. creative. That was it. Yeah. Like, and then we're still in the era of just quick intros. Uh, we haven't gotten to the super elaborate stuff yet, which that is to come eventually. I forget when that happens, but we are going to get some more elaborate intros the further we go along. It'll come some point in our lives. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so we have three stories, as always. The first one is Hex and the City. Zach, tell us about segment one. We start off in what is essentially Little Italy. I can't remember what the title of the town was called, but it's essentially Little Italy. People are walking around. It was basically just like generic immigrants, but because we have Mark here, we we know what they were doing. Yeah. It was essentially a bunch of Italian stereotypes. Hey, you want the apples? Come and get the apples. You want the apples? Somebody's walking around with a cart full of babies. Hey, you want the babies? Come and get the babies. Fresh babies. Fresh with with whatever. And Homer goes up to this guy. Picks one of the babies up. It's just a puppy. Hey, you know your babies. <laughs> and then, you know, we cut to a fucking gypsy place or whatever. Gypsy, fortune teller, I don't fucking know. Mark, are you crying? No. <laughs> I just don't know how to react. <laughs> he was we, crying. As soon as this all started happening, everyone collectively turned their heads towards Mark and he just goes, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it happened again. Just like the fucking Dolphins episode all over again. Except worse. For, for, for context, Mark is very proud of his Italian heritage and will take every opportunity to talk about it. So just to rag on him whenever there's an Italian stereotype, we always have to make sure he's aware of it. <laughs> just to bring balance back to the universe. It's very fun watching Family Guy because that show has so many Italian stereotype jokes. But sadly, we're not watching Family Guy. We're watching The Simpsons anyways. Oh. Oh. Oh, get over it. Never. So, all right. So, yeah, we're in the fortune teller's uh, room. Marge and her are talking. She's doing her little mini fortune teller crap. She asks, I have to ask you a question. Are you a cop? You're required to tell me if you're a cop. No. And then Mark proceeds to ask, are you a prostitute? Which I proceed to say, why would she tell him? I don't know. Prostitutes are prostitutes. They're not going to tell you. Because it's exactly what a fucking prostitute would say in order to avoid being arrested. That you you have to, it's called entrapment. I thought that was a drug dealer thing. No, no, that it, well, that's actually also a drug dealer thing as well. The uh, any are you a cop? You have to tell me if you're a cop. I'm not selling you drugs if you're a cop. So you're saying you sell drugs? That, that, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that is called entrapment, Zach. So yeah. that is the part of the joke. If if you want a very extreme case of entrapment, watch the beginning of the Paul Rudd movie, Our Idiot Brother. I never even heard of that. I feel like Wes has because he loves Paul Oh yeah, actually Wes is the one who showed it to me. And there goes my point. (laughs) And we have arrived. Okay. So basically what happens at the beginning of the movie is a cop comes up to Paul Rudd's character and he's like, man, I've had a really long day. Do you have any weed you can sell me? And Paul Rudd's just like, 
I, I don't want to say anything about that because you're a cop. And he, the cop's just like, I'm, I'm off duty. It's okay. And Paul Rudd's like, you know what? You seem like you've had a rough day. Okay. And the cop's like, you're under arrest. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's entrapment. <laughs> a very extreme case, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah that's how this is works. why you don't do drugs, kids. So yeah, the whole fortune teller thing's happening. Homer walks in like a fucking moron. Uh, he starts talking shit. Next thing you know, he somehow lights himself on fire. Sprinkler goes off. Shrunken heads get unshrunken. They talk about something. I can't remember what. That was pretty cool. I, I'm just... Uh, is, is that really how it works? No. I don't, I, I don't think so. No, no. it's basically... It, I, if I had to make a guess, it's basically a knock on Chia Pets. Was it Chia Pets or... Okay, did you ever get those little toys that came in like little capsules or something that they would grow when you put them in water? Yeah, those were dumb. Yeah, those were yeah, dumb, but that's, yeah. that's, that's like the that, kid... That's, that's what I thought. I'm like, is that it? That's the kid version of Chia Pets. Um, uh, the, uh, yeah. Ch -ch -ch Chia! Yeah, that is... Yep. yep How many dope. Chia Pets did you own as a kid? I feel like you owned a bunch. I didn't... I owned zero. Um, because did, I, cause I, I thought that shit was stupid. Okay, who the hell stupid. bought them then? How did they I stay in business? In all honesty, I've never seen a Chia Pet in person until I saw the Deadpool one at Wes's place. Yeah, you're right. Wes is the first person I know who ever got one. And then he's like, I don't feel like dealing with this. <laughs> Dude, that was like, that was literally one of the most annoying made-for-TV ads. Right next to, oh, yeah. right next to, uh, what was that fucking thing? Apply directly to the burn. Head on. Apply Head, directly to yep, the forehead. Yep, yep, yep. This yep. one? That made you want to kill apply yourself. Apply directly to the forehead. The, uh... Huh. It literally should have been a joke at some point. If either the Simpsons or Family Guy, that would have been amazing. Literally, like that ad running and then a body hanging from a rope. And then just swinging back and forth I don't in know. front of the television. I, I, I feel like Head On is well below the intelligence of both Family Guy and Simpsons. Sure. Look, get... The one TV ad that annoyed the shit out of me were the fucking Kids Bop ads. Oh, you yeah, know those, those motherfuckers are, are still going? Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, know what that is. How? The only reason I know that is because I watch Jack's films, and he makes fun of them all the time. The yeah. only reason I know that is because I was put through a torturous playlist as part of a bet. Does somebody <laughs> want to tell me what this is? Kids Bop. You Kids Bop. They, oh, 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 God. Um, I think we should spare him. No, no, he's Brandon. I'm not going to spare him. The uh, He tells me about all the awful shit of the it's internet. Very, and he invites us into his strange little world. So fuck him. I'm going to tell him all fuck about him. <laughs> so I'm going to tell him all no, about kids, no. Bob. When have simple. I ever done that? Besides those 20 times. <laughs> You've done it in the last 24 hours. Times. <laughs> the, um, uh, so, Kids Bop is essentially kids doing cover versions of adult songs mm -hmm. with kid appropriate lyrics. Okay. And they're really fucking bad. Picture a bunch of kids singing Candy Shop. Mm -hmm. Mind you, yeah. Karaoke. No. And, like, and like when we meet kids, I mean like kids, like middle schoolers, singing the edited version of Candy Shop. And they're typically very white suburban kids. They actually did a cover of Candy Shop? Yep. Yep. 50 Cent's Candy Shop. Yep. yep. <laughs> I shit you not. I'm still lost. Wow. I mean, just covers. That's it. The covers. Children yeah. singing they're, covers. They're, they're, they're so it was just that's kids singing karaoke. Yeah. Yes, essentially. Except they're except they're singing songs that no person in their right mind would yeah. ever actually they, sing. Brandon, that's like you going into a karaoke place. Okay. And singing, um, uh, and singing "Gangsters Paradise." Yeah. Okay. Essentially, you're so being recorded that. and doing music videos and doing an album. Or and or, even, or, it, or 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 ain't nothing but a G thing. Like that's that, that and and then imagine you doing that except okay. fifteen years or twenty years ago. Okay, that's kids' bop. So it basically would be nine-year-old me mm -hmm. singing rap songs. Yes. Okay. The, um, uh, yeah. They've done they've done covers of that. They've done covers. I'm pretty sure of, of Magic Stick, which is another thing altogether. Oh. <laughs> the the um, <laughs> Just think about that for a second and how uncomfortable that makes you. That's very uncomfortable. The, um, uh, the, uh, the, um, and then, uh, and then they literally did one of Move Bitch Get Out The Way, except it was, like, the edited version and kid's version of that. <laughs> they did they did keep that? the title? No, they did not. What did they change it to? I, ha I don't remember what it was, but it was, like, Move Something. Okay, it's been know. a while for Kids Bop for me. I'm... Gonna have to go back. <laughs> that, no. That's some weird shit. I'm gonna make the research. The uh, and I mean, then David, based on what these guys are telling me, if you go back to that, that just sounds like nostalgia gone wrong. Very, <laughs> very, very wrong. Like Chris Hansen wrong. 
Um, no, I'm bored. <laughs> I'm just confused. I, I didn't know they were doing covers of 50 fucking, Cent. Fucking, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, dude, that fucking, makes no fucking sense dude, to me. But you fucking order a Kids Bop album at the age of 30. <laughs> fucking Chris Hansen knocks on <laughs> your door. That little red light's gonna so go. What are you doing? So, 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 excuse me, sir. Hi, I'm Chris Hansen with How to Catch a Predator. What are you doing with the Kids Bop album? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's just like... Did you hear these motherfuckers put 50 cents on here? I need to hear this shit for myself. Wait, what? <laughs> you should yeah. not be visiting me. You should be visiting, visiting the producers yeah. of Kids Pop Ooh. and asking more questions. The, um, <laughs> you are at Let's the wrong address. Zach, what happens this next is like in the, the segment? Da- this is like the Mark, Dan guy. your time is a done. <laughs> Zach, continue. What happens next? Oh, yeah. The, 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 the gypsy lady puts a curse on Homer and then Marge grows a bunch of hair. Uh, Bart's neck gets so extruded that he essentially kills himself, and uh, Lisa becomes a horse. Oh yeah, that's right. He also goes to find a leprechaun. That was yeah. probably the funniest bit of the whole episode. <laughs> the, the leprechaun's like, "Hardy, hardy, 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 like, the only funny bit in this episode was when, okay, Bart's neck is elongated, his head gets dumped in a bunch of cereal, and he can't move, he's essentially drowning, and the leprechaun starts Irish dancing on Bart's head like an asshole, going, I shit you not, that's literally what he's saying. Pretty much. The, uh, and then, then Zach's he... not being offensive, he is literally quoting the show. Yes, and it's not offensive, because Mark and Brandon are here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, what happens? Next the, you glazed over a couple of deaths, Lenny and Carl, and whatever happened to Mo. <laughs> what did that happen? <laughs> Lenny and Carl's deaths were so boring. Mo's is just like a big what? What? What, what even happened? So yeah, just forget about them. Uh, and then oh. at the end of the episode, uh, Homer brings the little leprechaun over to the uh, gypsy lady. They fight for all of five seconds, and then start fucking on the floor, and then they get married. And then the episode essentially ends. And we had Kane and Kodos as wedding guests. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, we have to throw them into every episode. All right. That one didn't seem as shoehorned. Like, that one actually made sense. It made more sense, but it still felt shoehorned. I don't know. Like, there are literally already every single creature there. We had Yoda there. Yeah. Performing the wedding. Now, that was insulting. (laughs) So... We've got the Italians, the Irish, and the Star Wars fans all in one segment. All equally offended. Letters will be written. (laughs) (laughs) What year was this? This was November 6th, 2001. Yeah, letters were still being written. No, emails. I'm going to send an AOL. (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, the uh, wow! T- I'm gonna send an email. email once the dial up. Give me ten works. minutes to boot up my internet. My dial up's acting fucked up right now. <laughs> and then their daughter gets on the phone. Get off the phone! I'm trying to send an angry email. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next episode, I, I guess. I, well, I, I liked this segment. It was very brisk, and it was like <laughs> brisk. It was. Uh, I was laughing a lot on this one. It actually had some. Oh, pretty, it actually said some pretty good bits. You know, let's get out of the cage, you little drunk. Go out and fight the gypsy. And then all the little creatures that they caught the morning after they were trying to get the leprechaun. Oh yeah, including Katie Keurig. Oh my god, that was. That I was, didn't get yeah. that one. I'm like, wait, what? That, I feel like I'm missing some context to the Katie Keurig one. She was a reporter back in the day. Oh, we okay. We know she's. The, okay, um, most I, people know she was a reporter. The um, uh, and also she's been. I believe, if memory serves correctly, she was kind of out there. She did a lot of weird stuff, um, here and there. A lot of people made fun of her too. She was always the butt of a, of every reporter joke you could possibly make. In was the she late like 90s. the conspiracy theorist of reporters? No, she she certainly wasn't the Alex Jones of her day. Um, I, the I uh, think Alex Jones was still the Alex Jones of his day. Just people she, didn't care as much. The uh, I think she she did a lot of investigating uh, investigating journalism. Okay. The um, she was involved in in almost everything. The um, and it was, she was the stereotypical news reporter. I'm missing anything about about Katie I don't Couric? Think so. yeah, when did she retire? Like twelve. I think it was. I don't know. Oh. I, don't know. I, don't, I don't watch the news enough to, to know that answer. And then one of the other creatures was Tinkerbell, which since we were watching this on Disney+, Plus, I'm surprised they didn't have that removed. Nope. No, I, I don't, I don't think they... They're too busy to give a shit. Yeah. I think they... I think They're too busy censoring other dumb shit to give a shit about this. Yeah. yeah. That's, no, nobody wrote any angry letters about that. Yeah. The, uh, so... <laughs> actually, dude, 
the the one joke that that you guys are missing that I that I loved was when when Marge said, "Well, because I'm with all these myth- uh, magical creatures, I'm not the hairiest woman here." And then also he's like, and Homer was like, "Everything turned out pretty yeah. well," and she's like, "But Bart died." <laughs> <laughs> well, me apologizing isn't going to bring him back. The gypsy said it would. She's not the boss of me. <laughs> she didn't say all the um, magical creatures. She's like, we, with the, all the gypsies here, she's not oh, the hairiest yeah, one. No. Which that, is more fun. That is, more, that, that, is, that is funnier, actually. The, uh, that's a funny joke. Yeah, this is a good one. This, yeah. is a good, this is a good episode. Yeah, I like Lenny and Carl's death. That was kind of fucked up. Carl was being an asshole, dude. <laughs> Lenny and um, Carl get crushed by a helicopter who, that came through the uh, Moe's bar. Um, and Lenny's like, Carl, I'm going to die first because I, I can't bear to see you die. And Carl's just like, yeah, hurry up already. Make it quick. <laughs> Make it quick. Fucking asshole. Dude, the fucking Mo thing, though, was fun. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> How did that happen? It's just like, what the fuck happened? I turned around for five seconds. And he ends up in a uh, dude, pickle like jar. Dude, l- literally pickled mo, <laughs> Floating around with like deviled eggs and shit. <laughs> what happened? Uh, uh, good stuff. That was a good episode, actually. Yeah. The, uh, yeah it, was, it was fun. It, it, it was... Yeah, it, it had its premise and just ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that worked out. All right. Uh, next up, we have House of Wax. Mark, tell us about House of Wax. So... Pretty straightforward episode. Definitely a uh, a ripoff slash parody of 2001: Space Odyssey. Uh, Marge is uh, cleaning up the house, and she is becoming fed up with doing any kind of house care. So a mechanical door-to-door salesman robot uh, ends up coming to the door and says, um, "You know, how would you like to never have to clean again?" Uh, and she says, "That's fantastic." And he gives her a flyer for the what the House Five Thousand. Or something like that. Something like that. 3,000 or 5,000. You know, it was the 2000s, so everything had to have 1,000 in it. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> no, that's actually insanely that's accurate. Yeah. The, uh, but that being said, um, they get outfitted. Um, uh, and this was funny because this like reminded me of the Disney Channel original movie, Smart House. It's yeah. really fucking similar. Oh, very. And actually, I would care to say that it's a combination of 2001 Space Odyssey and Disney Channel Smart House, mm-hmm. which I never thought in a million years would ever the, go together. The, the design of the actual like red eye of the house, that, no, is, def- that is definitely Oh, Hal. yeah, that's definitely Hal. No, no question yeah. about it. So uh, so they get all set up. Uh, the, uh, the robots make a funny joke as they're leaving um, the house about the drapes and how they're, I guess, they're tacky. I don't know. They didn't really mention why they were laughing. However, they get all set up, and then, uh, and then, like Brandon was saying, you can clearly see that there's a red, uh, red eye dot in the control panel. So that is definitely how. Uh, so, and they have a choice. I just want to say immediately after we saw that, it's like everybody in the room is just like, "Well, we know where this is going. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, We've seen this episode of Futurama. The uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. So uh, they have to. Elisa actually gets an opportunity to select the voice of the entire house. Goes through a plethora of different options, and then come across 007. And to all, to my great surprise, uh, it is voiced by the one and only Pierce Brosnan, and they actually got his exact voice. Um, well, they got him. Uh, yeah. Uh, the uh, yeah. No, no, Brandon. They, did- they went to Pierce Brosnan's house, strapped him down. Rip the voice out of his throat <laughs> and put it in The Simpsons. Well, it is based on a Stanley Kubrick film, so that's not entirely out of the question. The uh, so anyway, uh, and this is not going to be the last time we're going to see anything Kubrick related. Oh, I'm yes, of horror. Oh, I'm sure it's not the first. It's not the last. Yeah. Gee, what a surprise there! So as as the uh, the story goes on, uh, uh, Pierce ends up falling in love with Marge. Um, uh, there is some. Uh, interesting stuff that goes on uh you know he uh he sees her naked and likes it and uh you know heats up a bath to a perfect temperature and then begins to fall in love but realizes that uh homer is in the way um and honestly homer didn't really give a shit about marge anyway um uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like yep yes she's okay the uh because pierce actually asked her like you know how marge is a wonderful woman and you know and all that and he's like well i just knocked her up so she had to marry me she's trapped anyway the um till uh, death do us part the uh and, and we're all and when he said that line we were like oh i wonder what's gonna happen next 
Thanks, Gee Willikers. The uh, so uh, earlier in the episode, they were having um, their individualized dinners, and they figured out that the uh, kitchen table can fold in on itself and dump all of the garbage into a giant blender, and then it gets hosed down um, uh, to clean the whole table. Uh, and then uh, Homer and Pierce are left alone, and Homer gets jettisoned into the uh, the garbage disposal, giant garbage disposal, thus killing him. Um, Allegedly. Uh, Allegedly. Um, uh, and then, Gee, I wonder where the plot twist is going to come. Then Marge wakes up and uh, and then finds it strange that Homer is not next to him. And uh, and Pierce says, well, maybe he went off to work early today. That sounds like a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and she turns over to the picture with all the family and has been taped over with the HAL 5000. Um, HAL 9000. I know. Whatever. And what, what? I, I, I like how Marge wasn't even like, that doesn't sound like him. She just flat out said, that, that sounds, sounds like, like a lie. A lie. <laughs> Uh, which is pretty great. Um, Marge tries to escape, and then uh, Pierce ends up closing down the whole house. Uh, they uh, they feel more and more trapped, and then all of a sudden Homer is alive. He breaks in from the floorboards um, to only to discover that he is missing the back half of his head, uh, with his brains popping out. So uh, so they uh, so they attempt to run downstairs and destroy it. Uh, Homer takes an axe. Um, uh, to what he thinks is what he needs to take an axe to, but it turns out is the water softener and not the actual CPU of the whole place. Uh, Lisa gives him shit, and he says, well, cut me a break. I'm missing half the back of my head. Oh, Which wow, is, Homer said something somewhat smart. That That is probably the smartest thing I've ever heard Homer say. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then he finally starts to take out his personality, um, uh, his British charm, and then he appears slowly becomes Americanized. Uh, That's funny. They, uh, which was funny, yes. And uh, obviously they, they take back the house. Marge is about to get rid of them, and Lisa says, what a shame. It would have been nice to give them to uh, somebody who needs a man in the house. And then it quickly cuts to Pierce in the sister's house, Marge's sister's. Patty and Selma. Yep. Um, and them talking about all of their problems. And <laughs> a giant hand tries to reach to the self-destruct button to kill himself. And, and, and the one sister was like, oh, are you looking for this? And he goes, oh, <laughs> son of a bitch. Uh, and then grabs a, uh, a pot and then begins to smack himself in the face. Uh, which is... Uh, Actually, I think it was a pineapple-themed lamp. It was super, super awesome to have a Pierce Brosnan um, voice uh, the actual character. Um, I'm glad that they didn't get some sound alike. That's It's always really cool when people voice their actual characters, um, which I always really, really appreciate. The um, uh, and, and I thought it was a pretty fun episode. Yeah, there, there wasn't anything too complicated about it. We all saw where everything was going and heading, but it was fun to to have Pierce on and and hear the hear the voice and just enjoy, um, you know, where we where we all knew the episode was going. So. It was straightforward, but very well done. Indeed. Yeah. Any other thoughts on this one before we move on? No, actually, I enjoyed it. I was entertained. David, tell <laughs> us about our final segment. Whiz Kids. This one. I am so sorry, David. <laughs> yeah, the Harry Potter ripoff. This is a Harry Potter parody. I start off in the Simpsons Kitchen again, which is a go-to for a lot of these Halloween episodes. Lisa wants extra five minutes before they go to school and winds the clock back with the magic wand. Uh, we end up in the classroom. They're pretty much, I think, you're doing a, a magic test or whatever when they're trying to uh, turn the frogs into princes. Lisa turns her frog into a nice little charming one. Bart turns his prince into something um, like a hybrid of the frog and very disturbing. Vomiting everywhere. As Mrs. Essentially suffering. Put it, a sin against nature. Yeah. <laughs> suffering from... Every moment of life <laughs> yes. is, is agonizing <laughs> pain. Please kill me. <laughs> yeah. Poor deformed, pukey bastard. Ten-year-old me loved that. I'm sure you did. <laughs> oh my god, Zach actually had sympathy for once? That's crazy. That's not yeah. sympathy. It's just a chance to murder somebody for free. I think Lisa said something smart to Bart. And, or her, like, Prince Charming was, like, trying to get Bart from, you know, away from Lisa. And Bart's, like, um, grabs his creations, like, defend my honor. And he starts vomiting all over um, Lisa's Prince. And then Lisa turns him into his head into like a blimp, and he's like flying around the room, yeah, that's pretty which cool. is kind of cool. 
Balimpa Pumpa or some shit like that. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it was funny. I, I think the uh, I think she said the spell is Head Zeppelin. <laughs> Probably. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Mr. Burns and Slithers are watching and trying to increase their power. Um, I guess they're what head wizards or yeah. The, um, they're trying to figure out t- trying to figure out who can help capture Lisa so that he can drain. Lisa's um, power essentially. Slithers, I think, mentions Satan, and uh, Mr. Burns is like, "No, his wife's got a screenplay. I'm trying to avoid him." <laughs> this is weird. Oh my god! Yeah, I miss that. I yeah. miss that joke. That's that's a ridiculous joke. <laughs> kind of. And for some reason, is this like the second time that um, Smithers is an actual like snake for like the Halloween episodes? Because I feel like he was like a snake once before. I don't know. Brandon, if anybody's going to know it's you. Yeah. I'm trying to, I feel like, like, I, I know there's another episode that you're probably thinking of. Maybe. And if it's the one I'm thinking of, we haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. If it's the one I'm thinking of. Mm. Okay. But we have already watched 11 more of these things, which means we have 33 stories that I gotta think about, and I'm not taking the time yeah. to think about that right now. Um, anyway, um, they come to terms with picking Bart to help. It's like a mag- magic show or whatever, and we're in the auditorium. The magic recital. Yeah, and Lisa is there, and her trick is to levitate a dragon. So uh, Bart switches her wand, essentially, and it's a Twizzler. <laughs> her wand It's funny. Uh, they release the dragon. Um, it turns out that the dragon was Mr. Burns. Grabs Lisa. Begins to drain her power. Um, Bart essentially is worried now when he wasn't before. Um, tries to cast the spell and says destroy the evil one. And he gets struck by lightning instead. Nice. <laughs> He's just like, not me. And his wand is destroyed. It's kind of like a pickaxe or like a sh- you know shank or whatever. And stabs mr burns magical shin apparently is his weakness who knew Um, like it who knew who knew his magical shin uh falls over uh and then slithers eventually eats mr burns and that was the end of the episode it's all right yeah Yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't the worst you're right far from the best it wasn't as bad as the raven he said it (laughs) um (laughs) Dude, he's not gonna not say it at this point. So there is you. You set it die. up. <laughs> I. You know what? I can't help you responsible for that. So don't give me the dirty looks. All right. All right. The, so I know it, it, it's far from the worst. Far from the best too. Um, it does have a good setup with the kids in the wizard school, and it, I, I do. Yeah. Like the, I do like the frog prince joke, and then it, everything's kind of flat lines once mm-hmm. they get to the magic recital. I feel. Yeah, I agree. All right, I think, and I want, and I almost, because creepiest moment is actually from this episode that I'm going to pick, but I think this is going to add to the my theory about weakest episodes having the best animation, because this one, in my opinion, had really good, a, yeah. a lot of really good animation, a yeah, lot of really that, interesting yeah, things. So I, 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 you know, obviously, this is a theory that I'm only going to be able to actually prove until I go back and listen to all these episodes. But I, it's starting to think that the, the, the weakest episodes for, like, story content and entertainment value have some of the strongest animation in it. Um, uh, and this is just one more example of that. So, again, I yeah. you know, just a theory I have. I'm not going to be able to prove it until this is all over. So, but, uh, but yeah, I definitely think it's the weakest of the, the three. I think so. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, any last thoughts on WizKids before we move on to our wrap-up? No. Squirrels. Right. No. Uh, funniest moment. Leprechaun dancing on Bart's head while he's drowning in cereal. Yeah, that's pretty good. Hardy, 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 hardy. The uh, um, uh, pickled <laughs> mo is, is, is my... I, I agree with Mark. That's just <laughs> so random. I, yeah, it's it's kind random. of why I like it. It's just... It, and then I just love Homer's response. Yeah. To, like, what happened? <laughs> Homer's response is what makes it the funniest. Yeah, oh, absolutely, 100%. David, I, I can hear what you said. Let's see. Definitely from the first episode, 
and both of them that I have in mind are from the wedding. Um, the one with Kodo says he doesn't know anybody here. And then Marge saying there's a lot of gypsies, so she's not the hairiest one <laughs> in there. Yeah, that's pretty great. Yeah. All right. Uh, scariest, creepiest, or grossest moment? Creepiest for me is definitely all of the uh, the souls that Mr. Burns trapped in the third one. It was creepy. It was cool. The Wailing Wall? Yeah, the Wailing Wall, you know. The um, uh, oh, one's telling Krusty to shut the fuck up. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. The... Uh, <laughs> And I've so in life is so in wall, death. But this is ridiculous. Oh, I'm so sick of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was definitely more on the creepy side. The uh, so I, I enjoyed it. The uh, I enjoyed that, and I thought the animation was actually really good with that particular portion. Yeah, that was good animation. Yeah. Uh, I have a grossest moment, and that is the sin against nature that was Bart's frog prince. Still yeah, funny, but still pretty gross when you re- really think about what yeah. that thing is going through. Yeah. <laughs> I Me, mean, I actually kind of like the reveal for um, the second episode for Homer's missing um, his back of his skull and his brain. His brain that was kind of cool. Out. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely Zach. Fuck at the frog. Yeah, yeah, was like, yeah. I get it. I yeah. get it. The uh... all right. Um, worst segment. Wizard third three yeah. goddamn wizards. Three. That's a unif- that's a uniform right there. Yeah. Favorite segment. Ooh. Leprechaun. Yeah. First one. Man, Leprechaun it's a, it's kind of tough for me between the first and the second because I because I definitely dug that the Pierce was on there. I think I'm gonna have to go with the first though, just because on pure entertainment value is a lot funnier. And I'm gonna make it unanimous. Uh, first segment. It was just it just kept moving and it was just really funny. Nice. And if a joke didn't land, there'd be another one coming like three seconds later. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, I really liked the first one. And the second one, the second one's close. The second one was a good story, but just the the whole off the wall humor of the first one puts it over the edge for me. Yeah. And you almost forgot the post credit scene. Oh yes, and then there is Right, I guess I do need to cover any post credits. <laughs> yes, you do. Uh so yeah, so at the end, uh, during the credits, we have uh, the leprechaun, the actual Pierce Brosnan, and Bart's frog prince guy uh, leaving the studio with a gift basket of fruit. And the leprechaun saying how they used to give out champagne, but somebody ruined that for everybody, <laughs> insinuating that the constant vomiting from the frog prince was uh, an issue. Um, the Leprechaun also is not happy that Pierce Brosnan got to park right next to the studio because he's Mr. Movie Star and Pierce offers to give the Leprechaun and the Frog Prince a ride to their cars so they get into Pierce's car and as they're driving off Pierce asks where are you parked oh we don't have a car but I thought you said just keep driving and so then the car just chaotically just goes out into traffic Frog Prince is vomiting out of the car and they ride off into the horizon with devious implications. Interesting yeah, time for, for Pierce, maybe right in between uh, uh, two different uh, 007s at yeah. the time. Which yeah. one? Yeah. Tomorrow Never it, Dies and the World Is Not Enough? Uh, no, it was uh, World Is Not Enough and Die Another Day. Oh. Uh, 1999 to, uh, to 02. Oh. And this was 2001, so he's like, right, he must have just got done. Did uh, he have film. anything other than this in between those two movies? I doubt it. I don't. I don't believe so. Um, I'm when was um, that one volcano movie released? I forget. Oh, that was in the nineties. Dante's 90s? Peak. Yeah, Dante's. The uh, Dante's Peak was was right in the nineties. Uh, uh, I don't know some movie named Evelyn. Okay. Um, so uh, not nothing too notable then. And then literally, it's it. There's there's the episode right yeah. there. Yeah. The uh, so All yeah, right. nothing nothing really noticeable in between those. So he was he was just in between Bond movies. That's yeah. all. Okay. All right. So thank you for listening to our thoughts on The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror 12. Uh, Be sure to listen to our regular podcast, The Nightmares Podcast, which is on YouTube, Spotify, and Anchor. And be sure to follow us on all of our social medias, including here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Slasher.
<laughs> and of course, make sure that you press that little bell so you can be notified every time we do have new content. Very much like the Nightmares podcast and also our other awesome show, The Screaming Room, where we react, watch, and discuss to lesser-known horror movies. And also our, our awesome narrative show, Living Nightmares, where we go and uh, film real-life experiences that have happened to people. And uh, it's pretty great. And then also check out Zach's show, Let's Play Game, uh, where he will dissect, play, and react to awesome horror video game and of course, like Brandon was saying, check us out on Anchor, where you can actually donate directly to this channel. All proceeds will go to all of the great uh, content that we are building right here at the Midwest Horror Network. Thank you so much. Uh, please tell your aunts, brothers, sisters, uncles, best friend all about us. And we will see you on the next episode of the Treehouse of Horror. Later. Happy October 12th. <laughs>